Videos, animations, short stories, and whatever this thing is. My name is Crumbine, and I, I, I make things. Yeah, yeah. At, at the start of April, I wanted to challenge myself to work on something creative every day. Here's how it went. Okay, first, I'm a liar. I didn't actually work on something every day because I mostly took weekends off. Also, if I found myself staring into a black abyss of meaninglessness and depression, I ended up taking the weekday off too. Creativity's unbreakable rule number one. You can't force creativity. So let me tell you how I force creativity. A disclaimer, it helps to not have anything else to do, basically. Although I set this challenge for myself first, shortly afterwards I was furloughed from my job as a video editor, a lot of people look at unemployment and quarantine as, as the worst possible time to finish that novel, and, and believe me, these people are not wrong. I personally dove into that aforementioned abyss, ate a box of donuts, and cried myself to sleep while re-watching old episodes of Psych. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Three days later, I hit peak boredom. This is a brilliant phase of life where you've gotten so bored doing every imaginable uncreative thing, including sorting and throwing out that pile of old mail and, and cleaning out the junk drawer in the kitchen, that you have absolutely nothing else better to do than stare at a flashing cursor on a blank screen and curse your alcohol-addled brain for not being able to think of that word that means putting a lot of meaning into something else that's in, in, in. What is that? It's a word about putting the th what the hell? What the hell is wrong with me that I can't think of what this word, this this f word is? You put the thing in the imbue, imbue. That's it. That's it's 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 imbue. You you imbue something with. Uh, it's a good word. It's a good word, my friends. Peak boredom is one of those massive bean bags. You know that those big, massive, glorious bean bags that just suck you deeper and deeper into its squishy abyss. Peak boredom, people. It is a gift. The rules for my creative everyday challenge were as follows. Work would be split amongst two categories, writing and video projects. Writing projects were either short stories or musings, basically blogs. Video projects were split into animation, short stories for YouTube, this, this teleprompter-based dramatic performance of sorts. All of this work was meticulously tracked in my production schedule on Trello, and I'm pretty sure I am fairly certain that this is a huge reason April went as well as it did for me. Guys, it's one thing to do the work, but it is something else altogether to see the cumulative total of everything that you've accomplished. Trello does that for you, especially if you're like me, this, this jack of all trades creative that loves doing just, you know, a little bit of everything. The other component of this challenge was to share a finished project every day. So what did I learn in this first month? Well, again, plot twist. I'm a liar. I think I did an okay job maintaining a general 24 hour period, but my typical day isn't exactly a nine to five jam. Remember, we can't force creativity, so we have to figure out ways to hack our lives to make it flow with more ease. My best case writing example was the insufferable silence in apartment 616. I spent a day writing this 2400 word tome in a midday and then a nighttime burst. I posted it late the next morning after doing the graphic design work on the title card. So kind of, sort of within that 24 hour period with the graphic design caveat. 
My worst case writing example was Red Alert in the Department of Human Asset Management and Existential Mitigation. Marginally shorter than insufferable, but legit took a few days to write. Definitely not abiding by the share every day rule, but I still worked on it every day. To that end, even on the days when I didn't post something, I was still taking notes, plotting, or giving my creative fuel tank a chance to refill. Here's what I actually created in April. Of 19 total projects, 10 were videos. Eight of those videos went straight up on YouTube, the other two were a title sequence and an animation piece. The remaining nine projects were in the writing category, totaling 12,614 words seven short stories, and two blogs. Here are a few more things I learned. I like to write to read, like aloud. Firstly, I think it just sounds better in your head. And secondly, one of my video projects is to adapt my short stories for YouTube. So I'm basically writing a video script each time I sit down at the keyboard. Another thing I learned is that the screenwriter in me prefers to write mostly only essential description. First of all, it speeds up the process, and I'd like to think it also helps to engage the reader. When I offer a short three-sentence description of Jason in The Last Gift Shop on the left, I'm painting a very broad, tough guy image and letting your imagination fill in the details. Jeans, t-shirt, leather jacket, strong features and a stronger chin. He wore his hair long and in a ponytail because manly men have ponytails. I also learned that I'm a big fan of the M-Dash like chronically. The volume of complications in video work is the fastest way to psych yourself out of doing anything at all. Even when I'm not producing, I'm outlining my stop motion sequences, arranging sets, placing lights, setting up shots, making it as easy as possible just to get started. There's a saying that goes, the hardest part about running is putting on your shoes. I think the same is true for any creative work, which is why I spend a lot of time making things as easy as possible just to get started. It is absolutely worth repeating. That's also why as soon as I have an idea for something, it goes on my Trello board. I'm never casting about for the next thing to work on because I have an entire catalog with ripe ideas waiting to be plucked. Despite the pandemic outside, despite unemployment, despite uncertain futures, April was actually a pretty good month for me. It was good because at the end of the day, hopefully every day, I want to feel like I did something creative. Mission accomplished. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the sound of me rambling about my creative process, well, you should probably subscribe to my channel. If you've learned something or were inspired by an idea in this video, please leave a comment and let me know what it was. Or, uh, you know, just leave a comment because I get lonely otherwise. Finally, if you really want to show your support or you just want me to like you, you can always drop a dollar or two in the tip jar. All relevant links are in the description. That's it. Stay quarantined. Stay creative and be gentle to yourselves, my friends. Can you just scroll down or scroll back a little bit? I didn't actually whistle. First, I... <laughs> keep going, keep going. Okay, let's go back. To, no, to go back to the screenwriter. I ended up taking the weekday off too. And I'm taking the weekday off too. That I, for some, why does it make sense that time? Why does it make sense now? <laughs> All right, let's do the whole thing again.